again, this talk is about connected pen search against the laser rubber, and I will shortly define what all of the things mean. We start with the, what is a node search strategy. Basically, the idea is as follows. We have a graph. We have some cops and robbers. Basically, there is a robber which is occupying some of the vertices of the graph. And we have some cops which we could place on some vertices and then trying to catch the robber. Formally, how it looks like. We have a search strategy, which basically says we can either out a searcher somewhere to some vertex of the graph, for instance, to vertex A. And we can, for instance, add another searcher at vertex B. Like, say, we can first place to A, second place to B, and then remove searcher from A. And the idea is as follows. Basically, when we do this, we know that in the A, there couldn't be a cop, there couldn't be a robber, because we just were there, and we are in the next vertex, and then we removed a cop from A, but still, robber couldn't get to, to, to A. And formally, our search strategy is just a sequence of sets of vertices. Basically, for every move, we have a new set, and initially, the set of Occupied vertices by researchers is just some vertex. Which it has size one, and it doesn't really matter which vertex is this. We can start anywhere, and then we, since we either add one or remove one, the symmetric difference between the previous set and the next set is exactly one. Yeah, and the intuition is that basically the robber is sitting somewhere in the graph. We don't really know where, but whenever we step, we, we place a cop on the place of the robber, then the robber has to move somewhere. If, it's, if he can't move somewhere, then he loses, and we win. And that's our goal, to actually win this game. But anyhow, so there are different variations of what robber can do. I already said that the robber here is invisible, so basically we don't really know when he's sitting, and our strategy should work for any place when, he's actually, when he was sitting initially and where he was going to after our moves. And there are two possible known variations of uh, what a robber can do. Basically, he, had, he is either lazy, which means that he only, can, he only can move when we place a searcher at his place, exactly. If we don't touch his place, then he couldn't move. And agile robber, which is basically a robber can move whenever he pleases. But again, he always can move only to a neighboring place. Yeah, so anyhow, these are the two known versions of this thing. And yeah. The important notion here is the set of free locations. Basically, it's the set of positions where the robber could still be after some steps in a search strategy. So basically, first imagine what a laser robber can do. Then imagine we start from this third place of the previously described search strategy. Then what we can do? We can go to the, to the, to the top, then remove someone from here, then go to the top again. See, this is a fine strategy because Robbers, if, if robber is there and we catch him, and if robber is there, he still cannot move here because we, he is lazy, so he cannot move until we go to his place. So basically, this is fine. Huh? So robber can go across the, only through the edges? Or? Yeah, yeah, only through the edges. He cannot just jump. Yeah, yeah. He, he goes along the edges. So basically, yeah. in this, everything is fine. But now, if we, we can also remove this one, it's still fine. We can remove this one, still fine. But now we can't really place a searcher here because a robber, if a robber was there, he could move back there and it would kind of, it would make our job worse because he, he can be now anywhere on the green, play, on the green part. So this is really a bad move and the good move is to first place a searcher here and then we can place the searcher there because now a robber cannot move there because there is a cop there. And after this we can finish the whole thing by occupying these places. So now the robber cannot be anywhere. He must be caught at this place even if he was there. And if he was there, he would be caught earlier. And anyhow, the free set of free locations, initially it's just everything which is not occupied by a researcher on the first move. And then it is, yeah, this is a bit complicated formula, but generally just we take the set of positions on a step I minus one, then definitely a robber cannot be at any place which is occupied by a searcher, which is SI. And then he can still be somewhere which is like, basically, it's the picture a bit before. Basically, uh, this part corresponds to robber being possible to, that the robber can actually go there if you don't, if you don't, don't block space. So basically, if there is a path to some vertex from the place which is now occupied by, by the searcher but wasn't occupied previously, then a robber can go there. And this is this part. How many locations are there? I mean, like, location, initially, it's basically the whole vertex set. Set of locations is just a subset of vertices. Initially, just 
whole vertex set without one vertex, which is the initial place of the first structure, and then it kind of decreases on the time. Yeah. But it's always some subset of vertices. And we want to know, to have, of course, that it's empty at the end. So when a strategy finishes, there is no possible place for a rubber to be. Anyhow, continuing to a difference to, to a agile rubber. In a agile rubber case, we really cannot, in a slicer rubber case, we could have put out this searcher and continue further. But now we cannot, because agile rubber, if he sits here, he can still move there even without us stepping on his place. So basically, we have to keep this one here, and so use another searcher to go there. So basically, in this case, we have to use three searchers, where in this, only two. Yeah, so of course we have literacy and complete search strategies, which are, which are always have empty free location set at the end, so a robber can, have, can be only the empty set of vertices. And there is another possible feature of such strategy is that it's monotone. It is not necessarily generally, but it can be restricted to these strategies. Basically, it means that for every new set of free locations, it's always a subset of previously existing set of free locations. Basically, just means that we never con recontaminate stuff. So if if some vertex was green at some point, then it can never become blank. If we definitely know that at some place there is no rubber, then it cannot be <coughs> changed afterwards, basically. And we can define all these numbers. So basically, this agile not search number, how many searches you actually need to win a game against an agile rubber on this graph. And this number is just the maximal number of searches which you use during the strategy. And you, of course, take the best strategy. So you minimize across all strategies this number. You can also define monotone, agile, net node search. You can define lazy node search. You can define monotone, lazy node search. Okay. So these are all different parameters. Now, there is some already well-known established relations among the parameters. And interesting thing about this node search strategies is that not that just interesting on itself, but they're also connected to well-known graph parameters, for instance, trivids. So in his work, there was pr it was proven that Trivids of G is exactly the same as monotone lazy neighbors search number of G minus one, minus one just technicality, and the same as lazy neighbors, uh, lazy node search number of G. So you also can see that mon in this case, monotone doesn't really change anything. Then just the lazy node search number is the same as monotone lazy node search number. So basically, it doesn't really make sense to have a strategy which is not monotone, which allows Robert to go somewhere which he's not supposed to be. Anyhow, this is really nice that three is the same as this number, but also there is a, another characterization of this thing, which is called uh, three vertex separation, and basically it's defined as follows. We have our graph G, now we have some layout of vertices, so basically just a permutation of them or an ordering of them, and now we're in the following number. Basically, for every position i in this, in this sequence, we look at this number. It's the number of are at vertices, and vertices are red if they can go to i through the, through the place after i. So basically, they can have one jump to the set of vertices after i, and then somehow get back to i. So for instance, yeah. So this, in this graph, these two vertices are red, because they can jump there and then go to i. And this can jump there and then go to i. Note that you cannot really have two jumps before i. You, you always must have one jump to i or after, and then back to i. Huh? No, no, no. Uh, just, uh, just, uh, these edges, jumps are just the edges of the graph. So basically, this averages of the graph somehow ordered, and then we can jump on edges of the graph. We cannot just, we cannot just jump arbitrarily. These are all edges. So yeah. So this, this was some graph, you know, and it was like drawn on this flat sequence. Yeah. And for instance, for vertex i, this size was two. And we're interested in maxima in the to minimize this number across all the permutations. And the number is maximum over all i. Yeah, and also nice thing that turns out that this is the same as trivids. Okay, let's connect. Um, you could imagine, and it's indeed true that the same holds for pathfits, and it's also well known that but pathfits corresponds to agile, uh, agile strategies, while trivids corresponds to lazy strategies. So for pathfits, it's all the same, only here it's agile strategy, and also monotone doesn't really change anything. And here it's also path vertex separation, which is easier. It's just the number of edges which go from before E to after E. And it's the same as minimizing over all the sequences. Yeah, so this is nice and well known, but what is really the point of this paper? 
it's how does it change when we also enforce connectedness on the on the thing. And what does connectedness mean, I will define just now. So basically, the idea is we enforce the guarded space, so the space where the rubber cannot be, to be connected. So for instance, this is not allowed. You cannot just teleport somewhere and deploy your new search at some random place of the graph. You always have to go, you always have to have the zone connected. So you can only kind of expand a little each time. And this actually makes sense because, for instance, if you, like on, on applications of not search games, it's like virus cleaning or like cave searching. It does really make sense for, for, the, for the zone to be connected because you can't really teleport in some cave. You can only explore, explore, explore them kind of one by one or in the network. You also kind of always have to preserve the connected space of where, where, where we have everything under control, basically. Yeah. So we understand now in only, only in connected searches and for every, yeah, for every step, which we, you must have our guarded space to be connected. So the space which is the comp complement of the free locations. And we also can define analogously all these parameters. We can define connected agile node search, monotone connected agile node search, connected lazy search, monotone connected lazy search. Yeah, and the question is, what do we pay for that? Basically, like obviously any, every strategy is a connect, every connected strategy is a strategy, but not every strategy is connected strategy. So maybe, maybe this is actually much more restricting than the usual strategies. Another known thing in this, from this paper is with pathways, the price is not that high. That basically we pay only a constant to, for this. So basically they connected Agile neighbor search is at most monotone connected agile neighbor search and at least at most, yeah. And it's the same as connected pathways of G. Where connected pathways is, imagine now path decompositions when we have some bikes and stuff. So in the usual path decomposition, we don't require anything about how bikes are connected ap apart from definition of, of the pathways. But now we also, in a connected pathways, we require that all, e every prefix of the bikes, if you just take a union on the surfaces, it must in induce a connected subgraph for every such prefix. So for, for the first bug, for the first two bugs, for the first three bugs, and so on. This is how connected pathways is defined. Yeah, and then in the newspaper it was proven that actually connected pathways is the same as monotone connected agile neighbor not search. And also that actually multiplying by two just monotone agile neighbor search, we get monotone connected agile neighbor search. So this is nicely between this and this. Okay, and, but for a, for a trivets and in contrast, lazy node search, basically we can see that, like really there was a paper from which you, you can tell that actually connected trivets is really, can be really far from trivets. It basically can have a factor of logan in between. Anyhow, in this work, the other study, how, how, can, you gener how can you generalize these results or move this results to trivets and to lazy searches. That's the most important thing in this paper. Yeah, so first what they do is they define this, par this parameter is already, is already defined, they define connected trivets, and then they show that this is actually all equal, the same as with pathways. So the connected trivets is equal to monotone connected lazy neighbor search. And the connected trivets is defined uh, analogous to the pathways, it's basically for every path, fr the, the connected trivets is as follows, we have some root on a triple decomposition and every pass from the root to some vertex must again enforce a connected subgraph. So if you take again the union of all of these bugs and look at each subgraph, it must be connected. Yeah. And indeed it somehow generalizes the pathways because in the pathways, it basically, if you place the roots at the start, then it's the same. All the paths from root to somewhere must be connected, must induce connected subgraph. Okay, and also they define the notion of connected tree vertex separation. Again, it is defined in the same way, but in the same way of the, with the layouts and the parameters of the supporting sets. But the only di difference, which, which is why it's connected, is we also require that for every i, for every vertex, there is some j, which is before i, and also there is an edge between j and i. That's the only difference to the just tree vertex separation. Yeah. And turns out that, that, that all of this is equal. It's just the same definition. Anyhow, th this is the first part, but then 
another interesting thing, it, you can notice that this parameter is actually closed under edge contraction. So basically, if we have some layout with some costs, if we contract an edge, we never increase the cost. So basically, you, you, can, see, you can intuitively, of course, it requires a proof, but intuitively, intuitively it is like this. Whenever we have something which goes from vertex to somewhere, if we contract it, then it doesn't really change how paths behave, which goes, which go from the left to there and back to I. If there was a path from something which goes, which went through J to I, then it still is after the contraction. Anyhow, so we defined this parameter and it's closed under extraction. So the interesting thing is what really happens when, how can we characterize graphs which have low monotone connected lazy neighbor search number? So basically, let's define CK as the graphs which have this parameter small at, at most K, and let's define abstraction set to this as the graphs which have large number, which is strictly more than K, but all the contractions of this graph have at most K. So this is kind of minimal graphs which, which do not allow us to have this number at most K. And since this all makes sense, since this is closed under each contraction. Yeah, and probably the most important result of this paper is the characterization of this set, abstraction set of C3. Because, yeah, it is infinite, that is true, but also data show how exactly does it look like. It has a kind of small description, this set. And this is probably, yeah, this is like the, the complicated part of this paper, because this is like a really technical and long proof. And also another thing which they show is that the price of connectivity of lazy searches is high. Basically, it's kind of a reformulation of this old result. They show that there is a graph GK which has monotone lazy neighbor search number as 3 and monotone connected lazy search number as tri tri plus k. And the size of G is about 2 to the k. So it's like some logarithmic difference between this and this. Nothing on time. Huh? Nothing on response time. I mean, there is no response time. Again, just. Why is he called as well as? No, it's not due to the response time, just due to the moves which he allows to, which the robber is allowed to make. The lazy robber can move only to places. The lazy robber can only move after his location was occupied by the searcher, and a giant robber can move after any move of the searcher. Yeah, that's the only difference. Anyhow, just to sketch how this equivalence is shown, basically, this is not very really complicated. This is just, for instance, to show that CTS is at most MCLS. We just show that an search strategy which is connected and monotone provides us a layout which has the same cost. And basically just the order of verses in which they are occupied by the cops. You can see that it's really true. And for a connected trivet, that connected trivet is at most connected three vertex separation is basically we have a connected layout and we want to construct the decomposition. And our bugs are just the supporting sets of vertex i. So the supporting set is just this red vertices which can reach i through vertices after i. And the vertex on the i's position itself. So if you take this as a bug, then you can, it, it can really be shown that these bugs really form a connected to decomposition. Basically, the idea is, is when we move from i, when we have edges from i to some other vertices, this will be the edges in, the, in a tree of bugs in a decomposition. And the last part is that when we have a TD composition, we actually can produce the search strategy. Yeah. And just uh, we start from the root node of the TD composition and then go just along the tree. And this basically provides us the strategy. We just have to place searches in the same place where, well, where the difference is between bugs in this DFS along the tree. OK, so to the interesting part. The calculation of abstraction set is, is starting with this. It's not the final, but just some first examples. So just to be on the same page, let's, let's verify that K4 is neat in abstraction set of C3. Why it is? Because definitely for all kind of strategies, you need four searches. Whenever, like, it does matter, monotone, connected, lazy, agile, you always, if there is at, at most three of, of the searches, then the robber can always go to the last word, to the non-occupied vertex of the clique. So basically, always needs four searches to to search the whole clique. But then clearly also again after any contraction, we are only remained with K3 and then it is enough to have three searches definitely. Again, for all kinds of strategies. So basically this shows that K4 is in abstraction set of C3 because it has number of four, but every contraction has number of three. Analogously, you can see that graphs like this are also really 
in the abstraction set of forces three. Yeah, but really this is a bit more general because in this previous graph it doesn't really matter how many these things there are. There may be, may be two, maybe three, and so on. There must be at least two of these things between these two vertices, but then it may be arbitrary number of them. So to draw this nicely, the square on the edge means that there can be arbitrary number of these two paths, but at, at least two of them. Yeah. So basically any graph of this form will be an abs in, a, in abstraction set. But also there will be an element abstraction set like this. There are these variations of the graph, and if you glue any two of them, it will still be a graph in the abstraction set. Yeah, and this is the theorem that the set of abstraction is precisely this graph, this families of graphs, and any any of these two graphs connected by this vertex, not connected but glued together by this vertex. And this is the whole description of this abstraction set. Yeah, which is kind of nice. Okay, so a bit of, of the like some very slight sketch of how it how it's proved that exactly this is the abstraction set. Basically, first the start is to show that in a graph which is an abstraction set, there is always it's either by, by connected or it has exactly one cut vertex. And moreover, this cut, this cut vertex has exactly two bucket components connected to it. So basically, this is impossible since there are two cut vertices, and this is also impossible since there is only one cut vertex but three bucket components. The way to show this is basically to <coughs> to use the fact that after contraction, since it's an abstraction set, after contraction the graph has number three or less, and then construct the layout by seeing that either this or this has at most k, either this or this has at most k, either this or this has at most k, and then we can construct the layout, which has also at most k. So this cannot be an in abstraction set. Yeah. Then they show that for every graph which is not a way connected, it must have exactly this form. It must have, it must have two connected components that we already saw, but this connected components must be exactly in this set. Yeah. So also they prove that an another technical step is that whenever we have these twin vertices, we can actually add arbitrary many of them. It doesn't really matter how many of these there are. It doesn't change if the graph is an abstraction set or not. That's basically why, why this looks so weird for this abstraction set when we have this arbitrary number of two paths there. And there are some forbidden abstractions for the for this abstraction set. Basically, you cannot have a, a simplicial vertex. You cannot have this single edge somewhere. You cannot have this kind of separating edge, and you cannot have this marginal edge. I will sketch briefly how to prove that you cannot have this, for instance. Basically, if the graph belongs to C3, then they cannot be like this. And the idea is quite simple, actually. You just take a layout. Uh, since you know that after this contraction, the graph will not be in, in abstraction set, obviously, since by definition of the abstraction set, then this number is at most k, or at most 3 in this specific case. And then if you just take this layout, which achieves the, the number of 3, and then expand this layout to the layout of the whole graph. Yeah, this is layout of the graph after contracting this edge, and this is the layout of, of the whole graph. If you just take this vertex, which was after the contraction, and then expand it to this edge, then you can really see that really it has the same, it has the same uh, connected three vertex separation because really there are no edges going from there to there. So whenever was the cost hit to the left or to the right of this, it's the same in this layout, since this edge doesn't really change anything. Yeah, so this is how to prove one of these small technical stuffs. Okay, so. Yeah, so, the, so the, this last part, this construction which shows that there is a large price of connectivity is basically this simple example. We take this kind of, tr kind of a tree, which is a bit, which is, this is the sec, this is the kind of T2, which is the two level tree, this is T3, which is three level tree, and then it's defined analogously for all the larger R's. And basically you can see that monotone lazy neighbor search for, for this is always three, because we'll, we'll drop a searcher here, we'll drop a searcher there, and we'll just go with a third searcher along this path. And we will, like, just with three, we will clear everything. But with a connected lazy neighbor search, we cannot just drop here and then drop there. We must have a connected space. So basically, to drop someone there, we have to go through the, this whole path. And that's why exactly the mountain connected lazy neighbor search here is three plus n, when n is, like, the number of layers. Because you always have to occupy all these layers before you can start clearing up to the top. Yeah. Let's show this. And like finally, to look again at this abstraction set, the, fun, the nice thing about it that it's nicely presented, but it also has like two degrees of infinity. Basically, you can have in these graphs you can have as many two paths as possible here, but then you can also have here as many this construction as possible. So like this graph has 
even two degrees of infinity. Yeah. And generally, I guess this is a nice thing because really it's not that much examples we have about the abstraction set in the contraction, in a only edge contraction families. Like we know a lot about minors, but not too much about edge contractions. Anyhow, to start concluding th things, there were before also, like probably one of the contributions of this paper is also that they define these connected trivets. There were before some notions of connected trivets. For instance, this was requiring like the one part in the, if you have some edge in a two decomposition, then we can, then we can ask that all these edges, all the vertices above the edge are connected and all the vertices below the edge are connected. This was this definition. Or alternatively, you can ask if every bug in a decomposition is connected. These are all some kind of notions of connected trivets. Yeah. But then the one which authors present is more consistent with connected pathways, but still has uh, similar parameter equivalences. So like, like we saw with the connected three vertex separation and, uh, not, and the connected search strategies, lazy search strategies. Yeah, so an algorithmic aspect here is, yeah, we really saw that it's closed on the contraction. And basically, they say that checking the connected trivets is most two is doable, should be in poly time, should be because it should follow from the proof of the algorithm, but they didn't do, it, do this in the paper. But they claim that it's kind of, it should be doable. But still, for k at st strictly larger than two, this is wide open. It's, it's not really clear how this looks like at all, even after this work. Okay, so that's all. So computing the uh, corrected tree with the other algorithms, like for the tree with there is some approximation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for connected trees, no, no, it's not really clear. For connected paths, with there is an XP algorithm. So you can, in time, end to the connected paths. But for connectivity, it's like they know nothing at all apart from this. So what is the motivation we are doing from tree with to see, like connected tree with like? Structural parameter, which is like, which may be larger than the. Yeah, yeah, but then it's connected. Yeah, I don't really know that that well. I know motivation about why it's interesting about connected node searches because really it's it is in out of station more natural to consider connected searches. About trivets is a bit less clear for me why it's important, but yeah. Since it's connected, it's the same as connected, lazy node search. It's it's also interesting, I guess. But the yeah, connectedness, connectedness of bugs also may. Give, give us something, but I don't really know what exactly. <laughs>